Hi, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Reach Customers Online with Google. Just going to start off by saying that this webinar is being recorded and the PowerPoint presentation and link to the recording will be emailed to you. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat. Uh, questions will be answered um, at the end of each agenda item. We'll try to get to two questions and then we'll go ahead and answer the rest of them at the end of the presentation. So from here, I will go ahead and turn it over to today's facilitator, Chanshula Sedana, so we can get started. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Christina. Um, nice to, um, I guess, meet everyone virtually. I can't really see you, but I know you're there. Um, feel free to ask me questions in between. For some reason, I'm cl clicking the slide. Okay, it's going. Uh, Christina's gonna send out a poll very shortly. Um, while she does, um, I'll introduce myself. So I started working at Google back in 2007 and um, stopped working in 2010, but took everything that I knew and uh, started consulting. And I've learned a lot um, just for, from understanding what different business owners go through um, aside from just marketing. Um, I, now I understand the big picture of what small businesses go through. And so I will um, sort of touch on some of this stuff um, through this presentation. Not much has changed in the digital advertising world um, in 10 years. So a lot of it applies. I think what, what really changes is um, the numbers. We're spending a lot more on digital ads because there's more demand for it. So our presentation is called Reach Customers Online with Google. And I'm gonna cover um, several topics that I think will be really useful for you today. And uh, the first thing that I want you to think about before we start um, the agenda is how you typically find the things that you're looking for online, especially since COVID started. So most people, are now buying something online or purchasing a service or ordering delivery um, instead of actually going to a brick and mortar store, especially with gas prices up, right? Like why would you have to drive somewhere if you can just get it delivered or sent to you or you could have a virtual call um, even with your doctor, right? So that's something to think about um, how this new era is gonna affect your business. So your website may be your new front door, which is the first interaction a potential customer has with your business. So it's really important to keep that in mind, especially if you think a website's not important. Um, it may even be the only place your customers can connect with you. I'm gonna show you a short video. Um, Christina, if you can send that poll. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. This past year had many challenges. People have learned new things, like how to make any situation work, I'm sure you're ready for this. <laughs> how to keep going through tough times, and how to stay in touch while far away. Now, the small businesses they love are ready to welcome them back. It's time to find great places to gather and celebrate. To refresh and renew. See each other in person again. and explore new connections. Coffee shops near me. Now that your doors are reopening. Hi, good afternoon, how are you? This is the part that you tried to cut? <laughs> okay. People are looking for places in their neighborhoods and communities where they can enjoy special moments together again. They're hoping to discover new favorite spots so they can create new memories with people they love. How are you? Good. Yeah, nice to finally see you in person. 
so when they're searching for you, and you, and you. Be there with a little help from Google. Okay, let's bring the presentation back up. I think it's hiding right now. Give me a second. Christina, are you done uh, with the poll? Yes. Okay. Let me go ahead and read the results here for you. Would you like okay. me to do that? Okay. okay. So it looks like 63% of everyone um, has a website for their business. Um, let's see. 75% um, have not updated their business profile on Google, 25% have. And how much do you understand SEO? We have 38%, I have never heard of SEO. 50% are somewhat familiar and 13% are familiar. Uh, have you advertised with Google before? 100% said no. Wow. And which of the following Google tools are you familiar with? we are pretty even. So 38% on all Google Analytics, Google Search, Google Trends, and 38% uh, none. We have a lot to cover today then. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to um, try to share as much as I can because I guess we only have an hour. So I'm going to breeze through, but if anybody has um, any questions that are going to take longer than a minute for me to explain, uh, please email me. And um, I will be able to spend a little more time just because we're crunched on time today and I wanna respect everybody's time that's here for the next hour. Uh, so today's agenda is um, basically covering search engine optimization, which seems to be in demand in this group, um, creating a business profile. So that also used to be called Google My Business. It's, they're just changing the name. Google's always changing the name of things. Um, and online advertising which I think will be really useful to you. Well, let's get started. How Google search works. So I'm sure most people have used Google search, right? According to the poll, Christina. Um, imagine a library. Okay, good. <laughs> imagine a library with billions and billions of books constantly growing, but there's no card catalog to help you find anything. So you're not just searching for a book, you need specific information inside the book's pages. So that's kind of what the web is like. So when you think of it that way, finding what you need seems to be impossible, but that's what search engines like Google are for. Google helps people find information on the web by sorting through billions of web pages and showing people where to find the answers they're looking for. All Google cares about is just putting the most relevant information in front of the user. So if you're advertising, make sure that your ad is relevant, not just your ad, but also your Google business profile or anything that's on your website. Make sure it's super relevant to what you do. Today's workshop focuses on three typical ways your business can appear in the results. So in the organic business profile and by advertising. So I'm going to cover more on this. Um, does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next agenda item about how Google, how Google works, how the search engine works? I don't see any questions in the chat. Jenny. Perfect. Let's, let's move right on. Cause there's, I'm sure going to have a lot of questions coming up when I cover SEO. Um, of course, um, SEO is pretty complicated. Actually, let me go back to the previous slide. Um, so first, Google makes its own copy of the entire web, it scans it, and it catalog, uh, catalogs all the content. And so um, in, this, in this webinar, I'll also cover how you can update Google if you've made any changes to your website. And that's going to be really important. So now that you understand a little more about the scope of the web and how Google works to index all of that information, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more on SEO. That can be like a three hour presentation, but I'm gonna to try to crunch everything into, in here as, as much as possible. Um, I'll just cover the most important stuff. 
the first way your business might show up is to appear in what we call the organic or natural search results page. So th that um, square, that blue square that you see, that's where the natural or organic results are. You don't pay for that unless you're paying someone for SEO, um, you know, to appear there. But if you're doing SEO on your own, you don't pay anything to Google to appear there because Google is just trying to provide relevant information to users that are searching. Okay, so the first way your business might show up is to appear in what we call the organic results. Let's see. There we go. Okay, there's the next slide. So ranking in search results for particular keywords, uh, topics, phrases can help you connect with your ideal customer. So SEO is really important when it comes to managing your website, um, your products, service, or brand. If you have services or if you have products that you want to appear for, make sure you have a separate page on your website for every service that somebody might be searching for. Also, if you have multiple locations, make sure you have a page for every location that's very specific. And I'm not talking about virtual locations, I'm talking about actual locations that you have. So people who are just getting started with SEO have a ten tendency to think it's very complicated um, it can be, but there's a lot of, once you start learning about it, it's, it's actually not that complicated, but I think what's more difficult is actually doing the work. Um, understanding it's very easy. Doing the actual work is a lot more. Um, so I'm going to go through a few things that you can do on your own. So make sure that all of your information is original and relevant. Uh, don't copy and paste information. Don't plagiarize. That's really bad for SEO. Google has so many tools to, to tell if you're cheating the system. You can't cheat Google. Um, so there's no rule of thumb, but just keep frequent, uh, frequently updating your website as often as needed so that it's more likely to appear in search results. When you're writing content, include keywords um, that people might use to find your pages. Um, that's something that you can sort of find online is um, you can try, try to figure out how much how, how often people are searching for the keywords that you want to show up for. So it'll give you a monthly average because um, some parts of the year might have more traffic for certain keywords compared to others like holiday cards, right? That's going to be more popular towards the end of the year than the beginning. So yeah, Google Trends is one of the tools that I want you to um, make take advantage of. It'll tell you what keywords are popular and which ones aren't. Like over here in the presentation, you'll see boba and bubble tea. Um, boba is more popular. So if you're selling boba or you're selling bubble tea, you might want to use the word boba more often on your website or your ads or your Google profile or anywhere online. Um, just because it has more popularity. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use bubble tea because there's still some um, there's still some traffic for that word. So, so you can narrow down your results by location. And you can ad adjust the date ranges to see if the search search results appear different. Um, one of the things that I did for my mom's restaurant is I compared vegan and vegetarian um, to see which we needed to use more because she offers both, but we want to see which one was more popular. So what keywords um, are synonymous with what you sell? Make sure that your website loads quickly. This is super important. Um, actually, Google now checks your mobile speed more than your desktop speed um, as the standard now. So a slow site will encourage visitors to navigate away from it. And that, that is proven. So it's super important to do everything you can to have a high speed um, website. So, and this isn't just, this isn't related to internet speed. This is, this has a lot more to do with the content that's on your site. Like if the images are heavy and things like that. So if you go to testmysite.google.com, it'll give you a lot of suggestions. 
So this is what it, this is what test my site looks like. Um, there's a little URL at the bottom, but if you just type in test my site into Google, it'll it'll show up. So I want I want you guys to check that out after the presentation. It takes a few seconds. Google Search Console. This is one of my favorite tools as a marketer. I use this on all of my clients just to see the help of their website. Um, and this is the tool that you're going to use to submit any changes that you've made to Google if it hasn't been indexed. So if you've made changes on your website, but sorry, I live in downtown. There's a, ambulance going by. I'm going to show you what Google Search Console looks like while we So this is what it looks like on the back end. Um, this isn't really part of the slideshow. It's it's um, one of the accounts that I manage. It's a pediatrician. And so this client has a pediatric clinic in Fresno. And so it shows all the impressions, the average impressions over the last three months. You could change that date range. You could choose the last seven days, the last 28 days, last 16 months. You could, you could add a custom date range to compare different seasons between last year and this year. Um, and so it'll help, this information is really useful because it'll help you understand what keywords you should use more of on your website. Like if there's something where you're not getting very many clicks, um, you might want to use that more because it has a very, like that Fresno Pediatricians has a really high um, impression rate, but she only got seven clicks, which is me, which probably means it's not appearing as much as it should, as she wants it to. So you could use this word on your website more often. You can use it in your ads if you want to show up at the top. You can use it on your profile. So this is um, one of the pages. Um, if you want to submit a new URL that you just made changes to, you submit it up here. You just type it in, and it's oh, there goes another ambulance. So if you've hired someone for SEO, most 99% of SEO specialists use Google uh, Search Console, but you can use this yourself. It's super easy to navigate. Next slide. Anybody have any questions about SEO? Because I know it's a very big topic. So if you have any questions that I can answer quickly um, that might help everybody, let me know. Christina, do we have any questions on SEO? Uh, somebody is saying that the slides are very small on their screen. On their screen. Very difficult oh. to read. How do I fix that? Um, you can, there should be a little, um, like a split between the screen and me. And so you just drag that screen to make me smaller. Do I make sense? I can turn, does it help if I turn off my video? Let's try. Is that better? Uh, let's go ahead and continue with the presentation. Um, let us know if that works for you. Or there's a view option on uh, Zoom for you as well. No, that does not change the slide. OK, so it's your personal settings then, because it, is it only one person? Yeah. OK, so it's definitely your settings. So just mess around with your settings, and it should, should be able to find that. I know that Zoom keeps changing. Chenny, one um, question. Um, wouldn't awesome. too many pages compromise readability in favor of SEO? Too many pages on the website? Mm -hmm. No. So, well, you, you, need, you don't want to have too many pages and just to have pages, right? Like, if you, you want to have relevant pages with relevant information. So, um, if you're selling a specific service, like let's say that you're a chiropractor and you're selling um, a service called spinal decompression that has pretty high search volume. So you want to create um, a separate page just for spinal decompression so that Google can index 
index that topic. And so when somebody's typing for typing in spinal decompression uh, Fresno, it'll be able to appear and they have a higher chance of appearing. Okay, it looks like there are more people that have this issue. Christina? Um, I, you may wanna to try to reshare your screen, Jenny. I see okay. it on my end. Um, hmm. Okay, let me try to, I don't, I don't know how to fix it because Uh, you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, stop sharing and then restart. See if okay. that works. Okay, let's see if I can change some of these settings. Sorry, guys. I want to make sure that you can see everything. Okay, let me try to reshare, see if something changes. Didn't happen last time. Is that any better? It looks the same on my end. Let us know if that worked out for you folks that are having that issue. No, it's the same. Oh. Are you folks using a mobile mobile device? Maybe. Uh. Maybe you can play with some of the controls, Christina, while I go through the presentation. Someone says I'm on a PC. Okay. I don't know. It's never happened at our last presentation. Sorry, guys. Shouldn't be happening. Or maybe, no, that doesn't make sense either. Is there a way that we can just turn off um the video for everyone so that they can see the presentation better yeah video is off for everyone i mean for us so that they can't see us so it's just the presentation nobody's video is on on our end yeah okay somebody i don't know what to do somebody says i'm not having any issues working great um okay so it is a per so yeah it's not on our end unless zoom changed some features recently because we do these presentations all the time never had an issue Might try, to write double, to try to double click on the presentation for you folks that are having issues with the view double click on it see if it maybe zooms in but it looks like other people can see it fine um so let's just continue okay. with good the to know yeah. okay yeah because we're super short on time so i'm gonna breeze through this if everybody else can see if most people can see that's great um okay so our next topic is the business profile um, this again used to be called the google my business profile um now they're phasing that out and now we're just calling it um google maps so this is this little blue box that's where your business profile appears so i'm sure when you've googled a certain business or service you see somebody's profile appear on the right. So that's that's what that looks like. And Google business profiles are absolutely free. Um, you might get those strange calls where people wanna set it up for you and charge you. Um, I, I, I wouldn't trust them. I would try to set it up yourself. And then if you have a marketer, you can give them access. Um, don't really give anybody that you don't trust admin access. So think of your business profile as sort of a digital front window for your business. It allows you to showcase valuable current information that will help customers plan their visit to your location, such as hours of service. Um, today, my mom's air conditioner stopped working, so she needed to put special hours on her business profile um, to, to say that we're closed. So that's one of the things that you can do. Um, you can add special holiday, um, holiday hours and things like that. You can update your address, your phone number, your website. Make sure that um, if, when you Google yourself, make sure that all that information ap appears on your business profile. Also, make sure you claim your business profile so that you can make those edits. Um, it also helps to update your business profile 
um, every now and then. You know, whatever best showcases what you have to offer. And depending on your business or industry, you may see different features in your account. Like if you're a restaurant, you're going to see very different stuff from um, someone who's a plumber, I guess. You can also see a business profile, sorry, use a business profile to engage with your customers. Um, so it's a, I guess it's a type of social media in a sense. It's, um, it's considered to be social media. So start with posts. Posts allow merchants to post live updates directly on their business profile. So if you have a retail store, you can put posts you know, sharing what the latest fashion trends are. You can encourage reservations if you're a restaurant. You can also promote your email newsletter. Um, you can encourage people to buy your products by adding discounts if you have any or special deals. Um, one of the most important things is reviews. Uh, one of the e easiest ways that you can optimize your business profile is by encouraging your customers to write reviews for you but also responding to them, even the bad ones, because Google likes it when the business owner responds uh, to the reviews, because it shows them that you care. And so they want to provide information to users from business owners who actually care about their product or service. Um, and you can't really remove any bad reviews. You can probably flag them but you can't rem remove them. And if it's a valid concern, I would just respond, you know, either apologizing or if the customer is wrong, you know, just be very careful about how you respond to it because remember that the world is gonna see um, your reply to that review. And I've gone to plenty of places that have bad reviews where the customer responded and I had, I had a great time. So just because you have bad reviews doesn't mean no one's gonna buy from you, but make sure you have more good ones than you have bad ones. Uh, be professional. You could also message. People can also uh, message you using this platform. So you can chat directly with customers. So if somebody has a quick question, they might respond to you and it might show up on your phone so that you can quickly respond to it. Tell your business a story. You can attract more people to your location. There's so many things that you can do. I, I encourage you to after this presentation to go and um, play around with it, play around with the business profile. It's really easy to use. It's really important. So the next topic is going to be online advertising, but does anybody have any questions about the business profile before I move on to the next agenda item? I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. So now that we've covered SEO, again, it's something that you don't typically need to pay for unless you're hiring someone to do it for you. We'll talk about paid advertising. And it's a great way to reach your customers, especially if there's demand for what you're selling. Um, and in this presentation, I'm gonna um, talk a lot about this business owner that sells jam. So I'm gonna play a quick video Jam, who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams for pretty much everything under the sun. Honey, do you know how many things you can do with this jam? You can make cocktails, you can put on roasted meats or veggies, oatmeal, the uses are endless. I've been a chef for about 15 years. I needed something fun to do after work. I'm not a big like TV watcher. I would stop at this like store on the way home, grab a bunch of fruit, anything like weird and exotic that they had, and I start cooking. I start jamming. <laughs> Too much? You don't like the puns? <laughs> Do you like the bananas, honey? Yeah. My husband is my test dummy, I guess you can say. <laughs> mm, you want some more? You like mommy's cooking? When I started Trade Street, I was selling on another e-commerce platform, and we were also selling a lot of jam in person. 
but COVID hit and all the markets shut down, which freaked me out. I'm already scared about being a new mommy. And then on top of that, I'm worried about the life of my business. People started ordering specialty food online, so we immediately had to pivot and focus all of my efforts on selling online. When people go on Google and they search jam or jelly, I want them to be able to find my brand. With Google Ads, they can type those things in and I pop up. You guys, that's huge. Being able to sell on our website, it really did save us. I couldn't imagine going back to not using Google products. We went from making 2,000 jars every two months to making 2,000 jars every two weeks. Our sales increased by 1,000%. <laughs> it was crazy. I've hired four or five different contractors. Hiring feels amazing. I think it's so important for our product to have a story behind it. I think when people see a woman behind the brand, a person of color, it just really adds something to that jar other than jam. Oh, you kiss mommy, you kiss it, mommy. I want Zola to be able to grow up and look at me and say like, my mom did that. <laughs> I wouldn't trade that for the world. <laughs>
what do I want to achieve? And keep that as a core of um, everything that you, every campaign that you design. Add information about your business so customers can recognize you when they see an ad. Um, identify where you want your visitors to land on your site after they've clicked your ad. You can write an ad that encourages people to take action. Um, it's called call to action. Take, uh, you can choose keyword themes. This is really important, choosing entire keyword themes instead of a bunch of random keywords. And you can also um, base it on location. Um, if you have multiple locations, you can target those locations. And you can also set a daily budget. So let's go into a little more detail. With smart campaigns, you start with a goal. A goal represents the main activity that you want your potential customers to do after they see your ad. So you'll likely have multiple goals. Most business owners do. And in Google ads, you can create multiple campaigns. But let's focus on one for the sake of this walkthrough since we're short on time. Uh, first, choose one of these three types of goals for your campaign. Um, either get more calls with an ad that features your phone number and a click to call button. So if, if your goal is to get more calls, this is the kind of ad that you would have. Get more website sales or signups with an ad that directs people to your website. Get more visits to your physical location with an ad that helps people find your company on the map. I guess a restaurant in this example. Okay. So you wanna <laughs> enter your business name as you want it to appear in your ad. Next, you'll enter the web page where you'd like people to land after they click on your ad. This can be your home page, of course, but consider whether there's a more specific page to send them to. So if somebody's looking for spinal decompression, um, you want them to go to the spinal decompression page and make sure that all the information they're looking for is there. Um, a lot of um, people that start advertising tend to send them to the home page, but people are lazy and you, they don't like their time wasted. A lot of times you just have to, you know, subconsciously lazy, right? Like not actually. Um, and so you, you just want to give them what they're looking for. And it's proven that when you give people what you're looking for, you're going to be more successful. You don't want them you don't want to treat it like a grocery store where they're, you're putting, you know, related items on opposite ends of the store so that people buy more things they don't need, right? Like that doesn't work online. Oh, there goes another ambulance. So it's a popular day for ambulances. The system will show you where the ad clicks lead to so that you can preview what people will see when they get there. So this is a great way to preview what a customer's first impression will look like. So if you want to see what your customers see, um, you want to explore this. The next step will be to write your ad. So you might want to think about these three questions. What do I have to offer? So use that to write an ad and focus on customer benefits. What do I want to accomplish? is the next question. So what do I have to offer? What do I want to accomplish? Think about that and include a call to action that encouraged uh, potential customers to take the next step. And so the third question, who are my customers? So write something genuine, uh, compelling, compelling ads that connect with your audience. So what do I have to offer? What do I want to accomplish? And who are my customers? So once you've written your ad, you'll choose keyword themes. So keyword themes are words or phrases that help match your ads with Google searches. In this case, you'll see fruit jam. So related keywords are plum jam, jams and jellies, all fruit, strawberry jam. Um, I know they're really tiny down there, but a single keyword theme represents multiple similar words and phrases. After your ad is active, you can review your campaign search terms and turn off any that aren't relevant to your business. This is something that a lot of uh, business owners forget to do is um, 
turn off keywords that are not related to their business. You don't want to show up on keywords that are not related. Not a good way to get traffic. You're in control of when your ads show as well. So you could choose different times. Um, so I, I, once you go through this, it'll, it'll walk you through. It's fairly easy to use. You can also choose where your ads appear. So you can set a radius around an address or pick specific zip codes, cities, or regions. So remember that the more people you're trying to reach, you typically will spend more unless there isn't much um, demand for that keyword. So your ads appear to people who are physically or regularly in the locations you select, as well as people who express an interest in these locations. So if somebody's in San Francisco, but they're looking for something in LA and you're advertising in LA, um, it'll probably show up to them even though they're in San Francisco, only because they're interested in the location that you've set. So definitely choose your location settings carefully. If your settings are too broad, you may end up paying for interactions with people who are not potential customers. So really narrow it down from the beginning and you can expand it later, especially if you have a tight budget. So with smart campaigns, you set a maximum monthly budget and you'll be presented with a few options. So even though you're setting a monthly budget, uh, it's divided per day. So let's say that you set $100 or Let's do $30 a month. I mean, that's a tiny, tiny budget. That's probably not enough. But I'm, just for the sake of this example, you set $30 a month as your campaign budget. So that is a dollar a day, typically in a month. But one day you may not get any um, clicks. So you're not spending any money on that one day. The next day you might spend $2 to make up for the previous day where you didn't have any, um, you didn't spend anything. So it sort of just averages out to however you set your monthly budget. So your av aver average daily budget is the average you could spend each day. So the actual amount will vary depending on how popular the ad is each day. But the most important thing to know is that the total amount that you spend in a month will never exceed your maximum monthly budget. So you might spend less than your monthly budget, but you won't be spending more than it. Before setting your campaign live, you'll have a chance to review it. You can make any changes that you want or need, and then you can launch it. So does anybody have any questions about online ads before I move on to the recap? I don't see any questions so far, Jenny. Okay. Um, I know it's, it's a lot of information, so if it's overwhelming, just feel free to um, email me and I'm happy to send some resources or you know, answer any questions that like if you don't know where to start, I can help with that. It's, it's overwhelming. It might seem overwhelming in the beginning, but it's really easy to do guys. Like technology is meant to be easy and user friendly and Google tries to go out of their way to try to make it as easy as possible. So I think it's just a matter of diving in and you know, using these products and it becomes super easy. You'll be a pro in no time, even if you're not tech savvy. So you do not have to be tech savvy to understand how to do all this. Um, if you are tech savvy, great. So create different versions of your ads to see which of the results you want. So more ads can lead up to 50% better performance without increasing your ad budget. So um, definitely add some variety to your ads. Don't just create one ads and you know, let it run, create three to see which one's performing better. Uh, negative keywords, um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but I'm gonna mention it again, because it's really important. Um, add negative keyword themes. So themes you want to exclude. So be sure, to, be sure your ads don't show on searches that aren't relevant to your business. Relevancy is key. So be as relevant as possible. Um, you get good juju with Google when you do that. So if you, I'll give you an example. If you sell a gourmet jam, you might not want to show up when your ad, um, you might not want your ad to show up when people type in um, recipes. This helps 
you focus your ad budget on ad clicks that are more likely to deliver the results that you want. So get more specific about when you want your ads to appear. Uh, weekends, business hours only. You know, if you're a restaurant, you probably um, want to advertise, you know, during business, around your business hours, maybe not after it, but maybe like before your restaurant opens, for example. You can connect your ad campaign to Google Analytics, which is a free tool. Um, I know during the poll in the beginning, um, a lot of you said that you're not very familiar with Google Analytics. And it's really, once you start setting it up, it'll just give you a lot of data. And so it could be overwhelming. So make sure that you only focus on the data that's valuable to you and your business. Like forget all the other data. Just look at the stuff that's important to you and you'll find some really useful information. And again, um, Google Analytics is, is a free tool, by the way. You can see how many times your ad appears, uh, which is also called impressions. And you can see how many times your ad is acted upon, which is clicks. You'll see which pages on your website are the most popular. Um, all of that data, I think, is really valuable so that you can make changes over time. Oh, and you can also um, pause your ad campaign if you want to take a break and resume it when you're ready. So I'm going to recap a little bit. So today we looked at three ways you can appear on Google, which is in the organic results, the business profile, and the Google ads. So these are the three distinct areas that we covered where you can showcase your brand, products, or services. So first, build or improve, improve your website to make search and um, search, um, sorry, make sure you improve your website to make it mobile friendly, especially on search. Uh, try the tools we mentioned in today's workshop, Google Trends. Um, Google Trends was the one where we were comparing um, like boba and bubble tea to see which one's more popular. Do that with things that people might search for. Um, don't forget to test your site. Uh, use test my site to test your site to see how your mobile speed is doing. And the Google search console, definitely sign up for that if you already have a website. Um, I think I created one yesterday for a client. It took me one minute. So it doesn't take much time. So if you want to learn more about any of these topics covered in today's workshop and you don't want to send me an email, you can refer to the slide for URLs. Um, feel free to take a screenshot. Uh, Google Primer is an interested, interesting one that we haven't really covered. It's not, I don't know if it's a tool per se, but it's, it gives you little mini lessons, like business lessons. Like if you're, if you want to, improve your marketing skills, you can, you can take a marketing class. Um, there, are many, there are many classes that'll take you like five minutes or 10 minutes based on how much time you have, if you like learning. So I think we are, oh, there's a slide for primer. Quick, easy lessons on your phone. And they're actually kind of fun. And they keep it interesting. Uh, Christina, I think we're towards the end of our presentation. So if there's any questions that we weren't able to answer during the presentation that you suddenly think of right now, I think it's a good time to ask away. Uh, one person has their hand up. Um, can you put your question there in the chat? That way we can read it out. Unfortunately, we're not, um, we're not able to unmute for the webinar at the moment. All right, uh, in the meantime, Jenny, let me go ahead and just, uh, I'll go ahead and launch that exit poll. Um, let's see how the webinar went. Okay, uh, we have three questions here. So we would like to know, do you have a better understanding of how to reach more customers using Google? And would you like to request a SCORE mentor with marketing experience? 
And would you recommend SCORE to a friend? Uh, we are on Facebook. You can find us at SCORE Central Valley. So I'll give you a few seconds to answer those. And in the meantime, keep those uh, questions coming in and I'll read them out to Chinese in a moment. All right, let me share the results. Jenny, everybody uh, has a better understanding of how to reach more customers. Uh, looks like we have two people that would like to uh, request a mentor. I will go ahead and drop that link in the chat there for you. And everybody would recommend score to a friend. Excellent, thank you so thanks, much, everyone. Thanks guys. I'm glad I wasn't speaking a foreign language. <laughs> okay, Jenny, uh, so question from Araceli. When you mentioned to make your website Google friendly, what do you mean by that? Google friendly. Um, does he, I think he's asking about SEO. So make sure that Google has an easy time understanding and reading your website. So information architecture is, is a, that's a big word. So basically organizing data in such a way that's easy for Google to read, but also your customers to read. So um, using keywords that people are searching for on your homepage. Um, gosh, SEO is such a large topic. I feel like I can do a three hour class just on that to make uh, your website Google friendly. Um, why don't you email me um, and let's, let's discuss that in detail because I have some questions. I feel like that would be a long answer because there's a, there's a lot to cover to make it um, Google friendly. And one of them, I think I mentioned um, earlier in this presentation, um, have a service page, like have different services pa pages for each of your services. That's being Google friendly, uh, making it load quickly. It's being Google friendly. Um, just making it really easy for people to access information that they're looking for. Um, I hope that answered that. Uh, what is the difference between Queries and search appearance on Google Search Console. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What is the difference between queries and search appearance on Google Search Console? Okay, let me, am I still sharing my screen? Yeah. Yes. So, ah. So the queries and what was the other one? Sorry. Search appearance. On search Google appearance. Search. Let's take a look. Huh, there's no data on this one. Let me see if I can find. Um, let's see if this one shows any search parents. So it's the different, so this one is videos, Google page experience, web light results. I haven't explored this too much, to be honest. So it gives you a little bit more information, especially if you've had a website for a while. The other website that I showed you, the first um, pediatrics, that website is fairly new. Um, this website has been around for a while. So there's a lot more data to look at. So good page experience is why they're getting so many clicks. But I don't really look at this so much because to me, this information is the most important. And this information is, the mo is really important to see which pages are getting more, more traction. So if there's a page here that you want to show up for more, um, this is data to look at. Which countries? And this is a really good one. I've noticed that with a lot of my um, personal injury or legal clients, like there's more desktop views and fewer mobile views. But for most businesses, there's actually a lot more mobile views than desktop. Um, and, and mainly because it's this is B2B, so business to business. So the people are at work on their monitors. That's why they have more desktop. But if you're selling like Jam, for example, um, you're probably gonna get more mobile. Yeah, so this one um, is very vague. 
I think they go into more detail on this on Google Analytics. So I'm sorry I'm not able to answer this very well. I just don't use that. I just don't really look at that that much. Um, dates to see which dates were more popular. Uh, Google Analytics is, goes into a lot more detail than this. I hope that was helpful. All right, so um, somebody asked if uh, we're gonna send a copy of the slides and the recording. Yes, I will send everyone the presentation and link to the recording uh, within an hour after the webinar, as soon as that recording becomes available. Uh, and somebody's asking Jenny if you can do a sequel to this training. It's very sure. valuable. Um, we have another Google webinar coming up on August 26th with Chani. Um, so please keep an eye out for that newsletter. You can subscribe to them by visiting our website, centralvalley.score.org. And you can do so also by clicking on take a workshop on there and sign up for upcoming webinars. I have a question um, for the audience. Um, if I'm going to do a sequel, which part of this is more valuable? Is it the SEO, um, Google Ads, or the business profile? Which I would, if I do a SQL, I'd probably want to focus on one topic and go into detail. Okay, SEO and Google Ads. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Okay, something to take note of, Christina. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. And thank you again, Chenny, for uh, doing a great webinar again. And uh, we can't wait for you to come back in, in August and do one again. <laughs> OK. Keep in touch. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye.